Hey everybody, it's John Swartz with Miller and we're here at the Fab School in Riverside, California. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the creation of a performance stainless steel exhaust in the off-road market. As somebody who's built my own stainless exhaust headers, say uh, it can be kind of a, a daunting task, kind of a long drawn out process as you work to get your angles, your uh, runner lengths, the, the right size, all with the, the efforts of trying to conserve the amount of stainless or lack of waste based off of the cost of stainless. Here at the Fab School, they've kind of developed a way to go from ideation to duplication that much faster and kind of cut out some of the, uh, the, the work in the middle. And we'll let Troy Johnson talk about that here in a second. We're at the Fab School today and I'm going to show you how we design headers. Ice Engine Works has came up with this uh, Lego set, if you will, uh, that actually uh, uh, snaps together. So we've taken about an hour to uh, design this side. Uh, what I like about this system is that uh, we get to see the, the finished product before we cut any material at all. Uh, they're, they're indexed with uh, a center line, so uh, we can snap them apart, we can index them any which way we want, and uh, pretty much from there, we can take it to the bandsaw and duplicate. Traditionally, we would start with mild steel, uh, get the whole idea, you know, into in you know, the concept, and then we would duplicate into a, a stainless steel. Okay, so I've highlighted the, uh, the arrows that are misaligned, and that's where we'll have to make our break. Come down to this one here. And there. That's how many pieces we have to make. The kit comes with uh, different radiuses. We have the 3 inch we already set up, the 2 inch, and the, uh, the 4 inch. We'll take our model and we'll put it onto the fixture, lock it into place, you know, at the front edge of the, uh, the model. Replace that with our stainless steel, and then go to cut. So now here we are at the, uh, at the bench where Troy's going to be welding this up, but I'd like to talk a little bit about the setup that they're using here first. Um, the, the crew here at the Fab School has gone uh, the extra step and created a, a nylon plug for the end of the tube that's fitted to the, to the inside diameter of the tube itself. Um, this hose is connected to uh, um, another argon tank where they've got the flow set at about between 3 to 4 CFH. Troy here has gone uh, and taped the end of the tube, just leaving a little bit of a gap for the inside air to purge out as the argon's flowing through it. We're using the Dynasty 200. Troy's opted not to, to use the pulser, and he's gonna be welding up the seams. So just to recap, uh, we, we went from a uh, complete idea, a mock-up, with the, uh, the, the Ice Engine Works um, Lego system, if you want to call it that, to, to a finished tube using the Dynasty 200, um, using some back purging. And um, you know, through the, through the miracles of, of modern technology and, and film works, obviously we, we cut this down, but we really didn't cut a lot of time out of this process. Um, for you guys, if you were to do this um, in, you know, from start to finish, one side of the engine, how long do you think that usually takes you to go from start, idea, to, to welding? Well, once we get the creation done, that's about an hour. And then uh, you know, once we duplicate the parts, it's about another two hours for all four banks. And then boom, you're already at welding. Cutters. And that's something that in the past would, would take, what, a complete day, maybe a couple days worth oh, of time days to, easy. to make it look good. I mean, yep. yeah, you could slap it together, but all right, good. So, this project, you know, here at the Fab School, they were able to take something that um, is a common activity for, for anybody that's building a performance race engine, able to shrink it down, and it's something that you're teaching your students how to do. Yeah. 